Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the second lecture of the third week which is essentially our, let me just put it down, lecture. So, this is week 3, lecture 2 and this is our total lecture number wise, this is lecture 12. Okay. So, in the previous lecture, we talked about the deceptively simple reaction of photosynthesis, where you saw the water molecule react with carbon dioxide, leading to the generation of carbohydrate, which is mostly sucrose, glucose, and as a byproduct, as oxygen. As a matter of fact, one thing I did not mention is the first kind of photosynthesis never used water, it was using H2S. I have already highlighted that part in the previous class and it is very interesting, you can look at nature in a very interesting way, that nature needed a perennial source of electron or a infinite source of electron to build up an order out of chaos. What does that mean is, it needs that electron power all the time to develop more organized molecules like from carbon dioxide to carbohydrate, which is much more well assembled, self assembled stable molecule. So, in order to generate that kind of orderly molecules, you needed an infinite source of electron and nature always hunted for infinite source of electron. Why H2S in the first place? So, think of the earth surface billion of years back. It was extremely harsh, there was no UV protection lot of sulfur, lot of H2S, lot of obnoxious gases and there nature picked up H2S because it was in abundance. Though water was there, maybe nature decided to pick up H2S and nature developed machineries which could break H2S or which could split H2S. So, as earth was cooling down, as things were becoming much more close to what life form, what we see today, as things were slowly, slowly, you know, calming down, so do the source of H2S, sulfur dioxide and all these things were slowly, you know coming down because the temperature was now lowering and nature faced a situation of dearth of H2S and possibly it is one such moment in our history or in our evolution of life itself. Nature had to search or nature searched or discovered that a very similar molecule like H2S is existing in its own armory which is water and exactly the same way it is split H2S. If it learns to split water, then it can do a wonder because this water is abundant in nature. So, possibly the jump from H2S to water in the story of life 
as a source of electron energy is one of the most critical step which changed the scenario of floor of earth, why it changed. Now let us assume somewhere or other by some mechanism from H to S it learned to split water, okay, which is perfectly fine. Here the byproduct was sulfur and hydrogen is being used for all the reduction and everything. Now you switch over to H2O. Once you switch over to H2O, you generate a molecule called oxygen, a strong, strong oxidant. So that brings us to a world where all the life forms which were used to live in a very reducing environment now faces a new set of challenge of slowly earth was getting rich in oxygen and those species which could not handle this new class of oxidant, the oxygen were wiped out from the floor of earth, they got extinct or, or they started living a life of extremely lack of oxygen environment or reducing environment, something like hydrothermal vent, something under the earth crust, somewhere where this particular molecule oxygen is not really present or may be present in a very, very low concentration. So that shift from H2S to water mark the beginning of what we call as aerobic life forms. So the journey from anaerobic which is minus oxygen environment to a plus oxygen environment and all these anaerobes now either they got extinct or started having a life in spots having very low oxygen or no oxygen. So, this is where you see places like hydrothermal vents or deep inside the earth crust. And there are bacteria which can do it, which can make food from H2S. So, if you now fit in the concept of photosynthesis out here, so there are two kind of photosynthesis, a photosynthesis which existed here and which was dependent on molecules like H2S and another set of photosynthesis which we see today which is here. which depends on water and this is that shift from anaerobic to aerobic life forms. So, the photosynthesis what we will be dealing. So, what is critical point what I was trying to make is if you look at nature carefully, these two are common thing. What are those? Those are source of electron. So, nature runs and this is what I am trying to highlight source of electron in making more 
complex self assembly of molecules and that essentially brings us to if you remember the last week order out of chaos or this is where you see molecules like CO2 is making carbohydrates which are much more organized bigger molecules. So, it means if nature has to run its machinery, it needs to continuously provide that perennial source of electron from time to time. And we now live in a world which we do not know how long, how many millions of years or whatsoever. We live in a world where we are totally dependent on water. But if one day, just imagine the water is no more there, the another you know, whatever in the happens in the universe, then again nature will look for another source of electron which we do not know what it will be. But nature will continuously look for source of electrons. So, this is what I was trying to tell you as electron energy and which is governing our whole energetics or the bioenergetics what we are dealing in this course. Now, coming back now the first thing out here this part of photosynthesis when we are talking about this part of photosynthesis happens in an organelle called chloroplast. It is called chloro because when you look at it inside a cell, you will see colorful spots, you will see a contrast of black and white. It's, suppose you see the cell under the microscope of plant cell. So, here you have the nucleus which is prominent structure. So, you see which are your chloroplast. Okay. So, now chloroplast stand alone as I have told you carries its own DNA and this is where it is believed that somewhere at some point or other these chloroplast were independent organelle and possibly these chloroplast have parasitized the plant cells. And possibly why they have parasitized the plant cell? It is believed again this event has been something to do as it is being as of now speculated when we move from anaerobe to aerobic lifestyle. Maybe these chloroplast held a possibility to split H2S, but then as earth was ushering into the oxygen era. Now, these chloroplast had two options, either they get extinct which happens to many species or it somewhere or other tricked into the game by getting parasitized into the aerobic life forms which could withstand a newer kind of environment or those from anaerobic became aerobic something which we have absolutely no clue. And possibly that is where an independent organelle otherwise independent species like chloroplast parasitized something like a plant cell and become part of the plant machinery. Now, how this looks like? If you look at the structure of the chloroplast in nature, so the chloroplast is something like it is a double membrane structure and something like this. This is the cross section I am drawing of chloroplast. Okay. So, this has an inner membrane 
which is out once again. Okay. So, this is the inner membrane of the chloroplast. Okay. Okay. So, this is and this membrane structure is very important as I, as I will move through, you will realize it and then you have an outer membrane which is something like this. Okay. Okay. So, just like any other cell which has a double membranous structure, chloroplast is no different. So, this is how a cross section of the chloroplast looks like. Now, inside the chloroplast, if you look at it, you have very interesting cross sectional structures which are something like this. something like this, a very stacked structure and these stacked structures are also double membranous. Something like this. Okay. Now, if you look at these structures, they are also as I told you, they are also double membranous like this and these double membrane repeatedly I am telling you this is one of the central common theme of energy production as we will talk about these double membranous structure holds a series of proteins on its on its matrix as you will see through which are involved in several energy transaction processes. Okay. Now, let us put then, so this is our inner membrane. Then you have a outer membrane further this part is called the stroma and this whole thing is called the granum this is the intermembranous space somewhere in between inter membrane space this is called stroma lamellae and this is called thylakoid space the space in between you see those blue dotted blue lines thylakoid space and this is called thylakoid membrane. And if you look at it chloroplast, the organelle of photosynthesis are typically 5 micron long. Okay. This is the kind of dimension and it is very similar to mitochondria. It has an outer membrane and an inner membrane with an intervening intermembrane space. 
The inner membrane surrounds a stroma containing a soluble enzymes and membranous structure called thylakoids, okay, which are flattened sacs. A pile of these sacs are called the granum. As you could see, this is the pile of those sacs, which is called the granum. And the different grana are connected by region of thylakoid membrane called stroma lamellae, which is connecting these different grana. And the thylakoid membranes separate the thylakoid space from stroma space. Okay? So, if you look at it, the thylakoid membrane separate the thylakoid space from the stroma space. The scleroplast have three different membranes. It has an outer membrane, it has an inner membrane, and it has a thylakoid membrane. Okay? So, outer membrane, inner membrane, and a thylakoid membrane, and three separate spaces. So, one of the space is the intermembranous space, which is between the two membrane, outer membrane. Then you have the stroma, which is this space. Okay? And then you have a thylakoid space, which is out here, thylakoid space. Okay. So, in developing chloroplasts, the thylakoid arise from invagination of the inner membrane and so they are analogous to the mitochondrial structure where you see structures like cristae in the mitochondria. So, this is the overall architecture of the chloroplast. So, I will close in here. In the next class, we will talk about the initial reactions of photosynthesis. Thank you. Thank you.